Some of you need to avoid the brand new SpaceX Starlink standard dish. Here's why. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus combination. I love those two together. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. The brand new dish is out and available. It's very odd. <sighs> and I just don't think that this dish is for everyone. And that's why I'm doing this video. So if you are looking at purchasing a SpaceX Starlink kit, know which one you're buying. All right, they're giving recommendations on their site, which one you should buy, but I'm going to give you my recommendation and give you reasonings for why, which one you should purchase. So as of right now, there has always been a dish that was fully articulating, unless you bought one that was a commercial dish that was for a boat or something or an RV, and that was just a flat dish and it would just mount to the top of your RV or to your unit, to your truck, to your boat, to your plane or whatever. All of the other dish have a fully articulating, let's say, mount to them that allows them to change their orientation, spin 360 degrees around to be able to orient themselves to the satellites as they're coming overhead. Now, remember, everyone is on the globe at a different location. So my location is going to have my dish pointing to a slightly different direction than your dish at a different location, right? So for me, I'm on the East Coast. My dish is pointing slightly north, but the majority over the ocean. That's because I'm on the coast. Now, if you were inland, let's say in Tennessee or Kentucky or somewhere like that, you're going to be pointing most likely to the north, maybe slightly northeast, and that is it. Whereas me on the coast, I'm almost pointing due east, pretty damn close, because SpaceX Starlink wants me to use the satellites that are over the ocean since I'm so close to the ocean, and those satellites are really not getting a lot of use. So you might as well use them if you are on the coast. That's why they do it, I believe. So what exactly is the difference between the motorized and non-motorized dish? I'm glad you asked. So the difference really is between having a motor or actuator inside or not. Now the physical dimensions of it are a little bit different also. So instead of being 12 by 20, it is now 12 by 24, slightly larger. And the thickness is a big difference. The thickness of the old one, which has that actuator in it, or the motors, which is, let's say, about four inches thick, maybe give or take, whereas the new one is only about an inch and a half thick, two inches max. So it's half the thickness. It is super, super thin. Well, the field of view that you're getting out of the original one is about 100 degrees, whereas the new one gives you about 110 degrees. That probably equates to that extra four inches that it has in length. I'm going to guess. Also, the power consumption is slightly different. Whereas the old one says that the average power consumption is around 50 to 75 watts, whereas the new one is about 20 watts more. The average, it says, is around 75 to 100 watts. So it's using a little bit more power. So let's go take a look at the website to see exactly what this thing looks like. Let me switch you over to my screen. Now, if you want to go and see this on your own, you can go to starlink.com forward slash specifications. Once again, starlink.com forward slash specifications, and you will get right to this site. Now, if we look here, we're currently on the standard dish. This is the new one. And as you can see here, it has like some kind of kickstand going on here. And if we scroll down, we can see all of the new information. We can see how thin this thing is. Absolutely amazing. What I do like about this is on the router itself, you can see that we have a Starlink connection here, a power connection there, and then in the middle, there are RJ45 ports. Now, I did bring up another, let me see if I can bring this up on my screen. Here we go. So this is the actual router of the, or new router, I should call it. This is what it looks like. So if we spin this around right here, let me just zoom in a little bit. 
This right here is where it would connect to the satellite and on this side is where it would connect to power. And right underneath here, right underneath this little door is where you'll find those RJ45s or your ethernet connection. Now that's awesome because the version twos or the second generation did not have this. We had to purchase a dongle to be able to have an ethernet port. So this is really great. I love this, this is awesome. Now we can go and take a look at what this three dimensional drawing looks like for the unit. And as we can see here, this is the kickstand and this is it. There's nothing else to this. There is a kickstand that comes mounted onto this. And if you want to change this and take this kickstand off and actually mount it, let's say to a pole, you can do that and they'll give you an adapter to mount it to a pole. But it kind of gets me wondering, like, why would you want to do that? Now, let's go back over to the specifications site. If we go down to the bottom, there's a couple of videos that they have they didn't have before. I wanna play one of these for you. This is the setup video, and it kind of shows exactly this new unit and what it looks like and the setup of it. It's only a minute long, but it really helps me focus in on who this unit is for and who it's not for. So let's go and check this out. Matter of fact, if we try playing this, it pauses a lot, so, Instead of playing this, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a downloaded version of it because for some reason it will like sit here and spin and spin and spin. What I'm thinking is there's probably a lot of people right now on here using this. So let's go ahead and open this up because I did already download it. So let's now check Now that this you've out. ordered your Starlink, download the app to learn more on how to set it up and optimize its connection. Before your kit arrives, use the obstructions tool in the app to find an ideal location for your Starlink. You will need a clear view of the sky to stay connected to the satellite network. Once your kit arrives, it will have everything you need to connect to the internet. Open the kickstand on the back of the Starlink and insert the provided cable. Next, insert the other end of the Starlink cable and the power supply cable into the router. When ready, plug the power supply into a standard wall outlet. Using the app, follow the prompts to perform an initial setup of your Starlink. Once it's found a satellite connection, it will automatically determine its alignment and notify you through the app if it's misaligned. If a manual alignment is needed, follow the directions in the app to optimize your connection. Now you see that right there? That is really interesting, right? So if you are not aligned properly, instead of it aligning itself, basically, because it has the actuator, it has the motors, and it will actually adjust however it needs to, to get the best connection to those satellites, well, you have to do it yourself. So let me back up just a little a bit and play this needed, again. Follow the directions in the app to you optimize go. your connection. Do you see how it's having you Once change you the start, orientation and then it will show you exactly if it is aligned or not on the app, which is kind of cool. But remember, you're doing this yourself, all right? And I'm gonna get to that in just a minute. Let's finish playing this. After setup is complete, you are ready to connect to the internet. For best performance, be sure to permanently install your Starlink. To learn more about your Starlink or to contact our support team, visit support.starlink.com. So while I really like the way they have done it, it's very simplistic, right? To align it up, you look on your phone, you're like, okay, we turn it a little bit until it's perfectly aligned and boom, you're done. That sounds good and everything. Well, how about if the unit is on the top of a pole? How about if the unit is on the top of your eave, two stories up? How about if it's on your roof or in a location that you can't get to? Now all of a sudden we have a problem, right? So let's go take a look at the plans to see who SpaceX is saying it recommends to use the different hardware. Now if we look at the best for households plan here, standard plan as they call it, if we come down here, it's $120 a month, right? And comes down to the bottom, it says standard recommended hardware. As you can see, this hardware is the same hardware that we have our dishy or our Mr. Bevel is, which is a second generation dish. And the price is $5.99. Now, if we move over to mobile plan, which is the Roam, all right? And we see that this is best for RVers, nomads, campers, 
this type of thing. If you want to put it on a truck, let's say, or whatever, if we come down, the price is $150 per month regionally, or you can spend $200 a month, and now you can take it anywhere on the planet. But now if we look at the bottom, it says recommended hardware, and it's showing that standard, the new dish with the kickstand. But look at the price. It's $599. I have a problem with that. Do you see why? Maybe not. Well, the one that has the actuator inside, or the motors, let's call it, they call it the actuated version. Well, there's a lot more that goes into that. Having those motors, it has to be able to spin 360, it has to go through weather, it has to go through a lot, right? It should be more expensive, and I guarantee you it is. Whereas with this new one, there's nothing to it. You have a little tiny modem inside there. It's like a piece of plastic with your antenna on one side. And then on the back side, that's all you have is a kickstand. That is a much, much cheaper option. A much cheaper to build antenna for SpaceX. So in light of that, I think the price for that hardware should be less. So you're going to be spending $150 a month if you're that nomad or if you're using it on an RV. I get that. That's fine for the mobility. You're going to pay a little extra instead of the $120. But that hardware is not worth $599, guys. That is not $599 hardware. My personal opinion. Okay. Now, there's something to be said. I know there's going to be some of you guys out there that will say, well, listen, Joe, it's a little bit different. The hardware is a little bit better. Um, it's a little bit larger. The dish is larger. Uh, also, the router does have the Ethernet adapter built into it. That would cost you $30 if you were to get the other hardware, right? Because you have to buy that dongle or the Ethernet adapter. I get all that. But it's still a much cheaper, cheaper setup than a fully articulating or one that has the motors inside of the unit. So there should be some type of reduction in price. In my personal opinion, I think $100 would be a good number, maybe even $50. So instead of it being $599, maybe it's $549 or maybe $499, which would be even better. Because remember at $499, you're still going to be getting $150 a month, $30 extra every single month, just for the ability to move the dish anywhere in your region. Or an extra $80, which will make $200 a month, if you want to be able to move it anywhere on the planet. Okay, So whoever has this mobile or roam package is going to be paying more every month anyways. So I do think that the hardware should be cheaper. Now, there's something else that we need to talk about is power consumption, right? According to what I'm reading, the new version is going to take approximately eh, 25 watts more power on average in comparison to the older version, the Generation 2, which has the motor built in. So if you are an RV or nomad in a camping situation and you're going to be running it on, let's say, battery power, well, every watt counts, right? Those batteries are being powered or let's say charged using solar panels. You really want to make sure you're getting the absolute most out of whatever you're plugging into it. Now, another benefit would be if this new unit would allow you to run it through DC only. So you don't have to go with an inverter from DC to AC, which loses power just in itself. If that's the case, I am all in when it comes to this brand new unit and you are an RVer, definitely go with it. But if you still have to use a DC to AC inverter to be able to use it and it's gonna be 25 watts more, eh, I don't know. I would probably still go with the one that has the motor. Less watts, you don't have the ethernet built into it, but you can get a dongle for 30 bucks and that is it. And once you throw it up, wherever you put it, in the middle of the night, something happens, there's wind, there's snow, there's whatever, you don't have to worry about it. 
right? It's going to move itself or lock into place and that is it, sandbag it and call it a day. But the other unit is definitely a thinner, lighter weight type of unit. So it really depends on what you're going to use this unit for. Once again, coming full circle, I think it's really about money and use case. If this thing, once again, was going to be able to be used through DC power, I would say go with the new unit all day long. If it's not going to be able to be used through DC power, which I don't think it can, and it has to go through an inverter, at that point, you might want to go with the motorized version. Also, if you went with this new standard unit and took the kickstand off and then stuck the pole mount to it, that's all good and all if you want to put it someplace, mount it and leave it there and lock it down and that's going to be it. The problem is, is over time, over the last 24 months that I've been using the SpaceX Starlink, it has changed its orientation by itself at least four or five times. When I first got it, it was pointing almost due north. Then it went northeast. Then it went east, northeast. And at this point, we're pointing almost due east over the ocean, over the Atlantic Ocean. It's changed over time due to where SpaceX Starlink satellites are rotating. That being the case, if you just took one of these new versions, locked it down, you wouldn't know that there's a problem until there's a problem. <laughs> and things are going slow and you're like, what is going on? And then finally you go look on your phone, you're like, oh, I'm out of whack here. I gotta go up there on the roof and now reorient this thing because it's not pointing properly according to the app. And then you'll have to do that. So anyways, guys, I wanna know your thoughts about this. Are you going to purchase the new version because it has an ethernet built into it because you like the form factor with the little kickstand and you just wanna throw it on top of a table? Would you buy that one or would you go with the older one older, the version two or second edition or second generation, which has the built in motors so that it can spin 360 and orient itself based on where SpaceX says is the best location in the sky for you at your geolocation to point to. I think it's going to be once again, a use case type of thing. I want to hear from you. What would you use the new version for in comparison to the older version? Are you excited about the new version or are you really not? Also, do you think that I'm right that the cost on this new version should be less because it does not have the actuators inside? It doesn't have the motors inside. There's a lot that goes into that mechanism to be able to fully articulate itself 360 degrees Pan and tilt. I want to hear from you down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not. If you are subscribed, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want more Starlink content, click over here. There's a whole Starlink playlist just for you. Over 200 videos just on Starlink. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, why. This channel is always about the why. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, go check them out. They are free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. And if you're looking for a VPN, look no further. Check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is jcristina. Or you can go to jcristina.com forward slash VPN to get 15 additional percent off at checkout. Check them out. And finally, Head over to my website, jcristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all.